Hi, good morning everyone, or good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining me here at Brett's Table. Um, I never thought that I would be doing these uh, remote cooking demos. Uh, still in November, after I started back, what, in uh, March or April this year, I thought that we would be a lot farther along than we are now, but alas, here we are. Um, Thought I'd wear a shirt that I was uh, was able to fit into last summer, but then I realized last summer I actually uh, meant the summer of 2019, uh, not the summer of 2020. So COVID, uh, my my COVID weight, I'm trying to get rid of. I'm back on my my Weight Watchers wagon, and. Today, uh, we're going to make uh, a halibut uh, that is poached in a tomato sauce. So, um, I'm going to move the camera here a little bit closer to the stove so everybody can see what, what I'm going to do. Um, I don't have as many ingredients today as I did last week. And actually, the only thing that I actually had to purchase uh, yesterday was some some beautiful halibut from Coastal Seafood. So originally um, this recipe serves four, but I, I don't want to eat halibut uh, for a week. So I've got some anchovy oil that I'm going to add because you know it's a beautiful fragrant olive oil that you know just had some anchovies in it I'm going to add some extra virgin olive oil to the pot and then I've got um, half an onion that I diced up turn that down a bit and I've got uh, a small carrot that I'm adding. Again, not in the original recipe, but I don't think you could ever have too many vegetables. I've got a few dices of celery, and this is my, my, favorite, my favorite savory wooden spoon. So I'm just gonna toss those around. a little bit of salt here in my beautiful salt box that my brother Kevin made. Throw that in. And I've got some freshly ground pepper here. Throw some of that in. And just let that saute for a minute. Even, even when I cook uh, for, you know, a uh, recipe that's theoretically for one, uh, sometimes it ends up being so much that I um, actually have it for a couple of, a couple of meals, and that's okay. Um, you know, I don't, I don't consider uh, leftovers a bad thing. Um, I often cook like a whole chicken and then, uh, you know, cook the chicken in various ways throughout the week, whether it's in a stir fry or in a soup or, um, you know, an Indian-inspired dish so that, you know, dinner can take, you know, as little as 15 minutes on a weeknight because uh, I'm, I'm still working full-time. and So it's still nice uh, to have food that's easily prepared uh, and can be put on the table quickly. So I've still got my, um, my onions. go back to my saucepan. Oh, and also originally this, the original recipe was to cook this in a 10 inch uh, non-stick skillet uh, because again, I was going to be cooking for four. The, res the original recipe was cooking for four. But since I'm wearing a white shirt and I am cooking with some tomato sauce, I thought I would cook it in a higher higher pan. Also, saute 
means to uh, to jump, and we're not we're not jumping any of the vegetables in the in the pan today. So I thought I would just use a, a sauce pot. So uh, so we're just gonna keep letting that saute a little more. Back to the stove. This is where I need a cameraman or camera woman. Um, so I'm gonna add the garlic now, some minced garlic. Oh, and also just to let you know, um, the celery that I just put in the pot a few minutes ago, I actually grew uh, and harvested that back in September, and it's been perfectly fine in my refrigerator now for almost two months. So, you know, homegrown is best. So I'm going to add a few fennel seeds. And I'm going to add some herbs to Provence, uh, just because I can. And I'm putting those in now just to bloom them in the oil before I add my tomato sauce. Which I'm going to add now, and this is uh, a homemade, tomato paste that I froze back in August. So I'm just going to add that. Still a little frozen. And I'm going to add some water. But before I do that, I want to add my capers. Just cook that down a little bit. Now I'm going to add my water. Turn up the heat. is about a third of a cup and that takes about 11 minutes to cook so we'll go ahead and add that in just let that get going here go ahead and add my olives and uh, it's just gonna cook for a minute or two let the tomato sauce continue thawing out So, while that's cooking, I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit. I um, just want to talk about some ingredients. Um, like I said, these are this was uh, anchovies that I had purchased, uh, a beautiful, um, very large anchovies. Um, ate them all. Um, sometimes I even eat them on top of a boiled egg with some, some mayo, which mayo in... in peanut butter sandwiches I'm still not sure about but I think I will try it one of these days people claim that that's a southern thing but the southern boy has never heard of mayo in peanut butter sandwiches so not sure about that but I'd give it a shot also um, capers capers uh, a beautiful uh, it's the bud a flower bud and these happen to be packed in salt, which I find to be better than when they're packed in oil or water. Uh, so all you need to do is uh, rinse them off so that you don't have too much salt in your dish. So those are beautiful. Turning my tomato sauce down. And um, I mentioned herbs to Provence um, because I have a lot of it uh, that I brought back from Provence uh, when I was there the last time and this actually is from a little um, olive um, olive oil producer called Moulin de Opio and I have uh, quite a bit so I actually put it in a lot of things it's it's amazing uh, 
combination of herbs. So that's that. Uh, and this, I don't, I think I mentioned before, this is a jar uh, that I purchased uh, in Biot, France, which is the same color and size as the jar that Julia Child uh, owned when she had her house in Provence. So had to get that. So back to our saucepan with our tomatoes boiling away here. Uh, gonna give it a stir so it doesn't stick to the bottom. And like I said, the orzo is gonna take about seven minutes to cook, so if anyone has any questions, uh, give me a shout. So the recipe, the original recipe also said that the uh, fish would take 10 to 12 minutes to cook, which I don't believe that to be true, at least not the thickness of the halibut filet that I purchased yesterday, so I don't want to put it in too early, otherwise it will overcook. So we're just gonna, some of the orzo is sticking to the bottom of the pan, so I just want to continue stirring so that it doesn't stick or burn. Yes, I agree. I love Biot. Um, love the artisans that do glass blowing. We also have some great artisan glass blowers here in the Twin Cities. So yes, uh, it's bubbling away. I think everybody can hear that. And we are about eight minutes in, so I'm just take a spoon here and see how the orzo is, if it's done or not. Nope, still crunchy. I'm gonna turn that down, add some more salt. You should always be tasting our food. Don't rely on just the recipe to tell you whether or not something is sufficiently seasoned use your taste use your smell use your eyesight you're all very intelligent people so trust your instincts and as you can see the orzo as it cooks uh, it's releasing the starch which is thickening the sauce Still sticking to the bottom, so we continue to stir. So, questions: Do you have to sweat? Do you have Do you have a sweet spoon? Yes, that is my. This is my sweet spoon, my uh, my wooden spoon that I got in France many many years ago, and uh, it's kind of it used to be a round tip, but. Somewhere along the way, I've been eating a little bit of, of wood uh, every every so often. And yes, I do have a spoon, one spoon for savory. Um, I have another spoon for sweet. Uh, if I'm doing uh, sweet applications, because the wood does have in parts, you know, or keeps. Uh, some oils, which I don't want to have in a in a sugar syrup or something. So I am anal that way. Here's a spoon that is um, dedicated just to stirring chocolate uh, that I have. So different utensils for different purposes. Here is um, uh, olive oil. Uh, not an olive oil, but an olive scoop. So uh, the French uh, have huge jugs of of olives that oftentimes they cure themselves so this is a spoon to dish olives out I have another one here um, that sadly I don't have a source for fresh olives to cure my own or I would uh, this is a 
um, Mexican hot chocolate where you put it in your your mug and it's like a manual whisk for hot chocolate so here we go back to stirring my tomato sauce with orzo can everybody see that Taste it again. See where we are. Mmm. Yes. So I'm gonna add my halibut now because the orzo is almost cooked. And I'm gonna take and spoon the tomato sauce over the fish just so that it cooks. And I'm going to give it about um, five or six minutes. So, I know last, um, last week some people were happy just watching um, soup cook. I don't know if you want to watch, you know, uh, tomato sauce simmering for five minutes, six minutes. Um, but when it's done, um, I will serve it in a soup bowl. Um, and that will be lunch. I'll probably serve either a light uh, Cote de Rome or um, a white, chilled white with this. Um, you could go either way. Um, and uh, that's lunch. So if anybody uh, has any questions, let me know now. Otherwise, uh, we're just going to, or I'm going to let this cook until the halibut is done. which I'll show everybody. Here we go. Back. See the, once the fish becomes opaque in, yeah, it, this won't take 10 minutes to cook. So it's, it's cooking nicely. Yeah, and I definitely have um, quite a bit of sauce, which, uh, won't be eating all that today, but I do have some uh, some lamb that I roasted off this past summer. It's been sitting in the freezer, so I I see a, like a roasted lamb stew with some of this uh, sauce this week. For a, a few days, and then dinner becomes. I work from home. I live by myself. So I spend a lot of time here. So today, uh, after this is over, or after I enjoy lunch, I'm going to make some more tart dough and keep practicing uh, coming up with a recipe that I can form uh, uh, tart shells or rings without having to use pie weights uh, and, and they don't shrink or fall uh, inside the, the the shell. Um, I'm going to be baking off some gingerbread cookies. Uh, I'm doing a, a photo shoot uh, later this week with those and I'm going to be doing another filming project for the Twin Cities Gaiman's course uh, which is going to be an evening shot so I get to uh, put on another costume and uh, head outside just after sunset tonight to film that so Crusty bread uh, would be a great option. I actually have uh, some sourdough brioche uh, that uh, I will slice and have that today with my lunch. So uh, thank you all. I think it's done. Um, so I will enjoy lunch. And uh, everyone have a great day. Um, please, please, please uh, wear a mask when you're outside. Um, wash your hands, uh, be safe. Uh, friends of mine have, have caught this horrible 
disease, uh, friends, other friends have actually died because of COVID, so uh, luckily I have so far dodged that bullet and getting sick and hope to stay that way and hope that uh, my friends and my family uh, continue to stay safe and healthy so uh, that one day soon, uh, whether because of the vaccine or that we end this pandemic. So thank you all. Uh, have a happy Thanksgiving, a safe Thanksgiving. And uh, hopefully we will see you next Sunday. So take care, everyone. I'm turning off the stove now and just letting that uh, my lunch sit for a minute. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you next Sunday. God willing, have a great day. Bye now.